Mr. Mayor, Madam Ambassador, distinguished guests, friends, Ranger Brothers, 173rd Paratroopers, 82nd Airborne Paratroopers, but most importantly, veterans of the DA operations. Bonjour, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honored and humbled to be here today to commemorate the 72nd anniversary of the D-Day operation and the epic effort to capture Pontoc. I must admit at the outset that it has taken me 40 years since entering into the United States Military Academy to get here. Better late than never, as the expression goes, but I feel tremendously privileged to be here on this most hallowed of grounds on this special day. It is not hyperbole to state that the sanctity and profundity of this ground, that event, and the extraordinary coalition effort which forged the victory still reverberates to this day. We all know and appreciate the history. 72 years ago today, 156,000 soldiers of Allied forces from the United States, United Kingdom, Free France, Canada, and Norway were decisively engaged here in the immediate 60 miles of this location in the largest maritime and airborne operation in history. Over 11,000 aircraft, 50,000 land vehicles, and 5,000 ships and landing craft, beginning the climactic effort of defeating the Nazi threat which had gripped the European continent for the preceding three years. Almost three quarters of a century later, the 6th of June, as it does every year, evokes the memory of that fateful day <coughs> and the extraordinary courage and sacrifice of our forefathers to risk all in the pursuit of liberty and freedom. Over 10,000 members of the coalition were killed, captured, or wounded on that epic day. As a proud member of the United States Army 75th, 75th Ranger Regiment for over 34 years, I can tell you the inspiration that we continue to draw from our prede predecessors who climbed the cliffs here. It has underpinned the efforts of the modern Rangers through 15 straight years of combat in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's truly great to see their colors today with all those battle streamers and to see our Ranger brothers who continue to live up the motto of Rangers lead the way. But as we appropriately reflect on the profound history of this place, I'd like to focus on its continued literal and, symb and symbolic relevance to the future. I must admit to how difficult it was for me to come up with the appropriate words to describe this event and what it still means. I studied the various oratory efforts which have proceeded today, especially those by our United States presidents. Many of you know that Ronald Reagan was the first to appear here on the 40th anniversary of D-Day in 1984, when he provided the soar his soaring The Boys of Point to Hawk speech. At the time, there were still 62 survivors of that, ex that experience here in attendance. Legend has it that President Eisenhower opted not to return here for self-effacing reasons, as he thought his personal presence would shift the spotlight inappropriately to him as the Supreme Commander, rather than on the thousands of international service members who actually carried the day. On the 10th anniversary of the battle, 62 years ago, Eisenhower sent a short commemorative message, which closed with the line, the courage, devotion, and faith which brought us through the perils of war will inevitably bring us success in our unremitting search for peace and security and freedom. President Jimmy Carter was the first sitting president to visit the site, although in January of 1978 and not on the anniversary in June. And his message 38 years ago included the line, we are determined with our noble allies here that Europe's freedom will never again be endangered. On the occasion of the 40th anniversary in 1984, 32, 32 years ago today, President Reagan, while citing the extraordinary valor and courage of the men who fought here, used the opportunity to challenge the Soviet Union, who had fought the same Nazi enemy with an offer to meet in the pursuit of reconciliation. 10 years later, 22 years ago, and four years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, President Clinton posed the question, how will we build upon the sacrifice of the D-Day heroes? And answered his own question by offering that avoiding today's problems would be our own generation's appeasements. He went on to say, we grew up behind the shield of the strong alliances you forged in blood upon these beaches. 
Our work is far from done. Still, there are cliffs to scale. President George W. Bush visited Normandy twice. The first occasion being Memorial Day of 2012 or 2002, 14 years ago, and less than a year removed from the heinous attacks of 9-11-2001. On his second visit commemorating, commemorating the 60th anniversary in 2004, 12 years ago, Bush summoned and leveraged the themes of Ronald Reagan, who had died the day prior, by stating that America honors all the liberators who fought here in the noblest of causes. He went on, our great alliance of freedom is strong and it is still needed today. And most recently, President Obama, only two years ago, on the 70th anniversary of this day of days, described the shores of Normandy as democracy's beachhead. He went on to say that our victory in that war decided not just a century, but shaped the security and well-being of all posterity. He continued with America, he continued with America's claim, our commitment to liberty, our claim to equality, our claim to freedom and to the inherent dignity of every human being, that claim is written in the blood of these beaches and it will endure for, for eternity. We find our, ourselves here today in weather that might have given Eisenhower pause in making that fateful launch decision that day. However, other clouds are looming. We face a security environment that amounts to a continuation on the themes cited in all of these pre preceding orations. Despite Jimmy Carter's hopes, Europe's freedoms are again endangered. The situation is a reminder of Eisenhower's declaration of our unremitting search for peace, security, and freedom. It reinforces Bill Clinton's advisory about avoiding today's problems as tantamount to the appeasement of our time. And it challenges President Obama's hopes that the struggle and the victory resounds for all posterity. Before arriving here today, I spent the past week visiting our counterparts in the Baltics and Poland. It is worth remembering the parallel history of these peoples in the wake of World War II and during the time of all those presidents speaking here. Unfortunately, in that period of time, they slipped from the bonds of one oppressor into the grasp of another and have only in the past quarter of a century or so emerged liberated and independent. Yet they face the specter of a revived threat and are very hopeful that we, their partners and allies, will not allow them to slip back into that existence. And so my hope on this day of days, as we gather here to recollect the exceptional valor of the individual Allied Service members and the invincible coalition that they formed, is that the spirit of liberty and freedom and the pursuit of peace and stability will not be one of those noble but unattainable goals. We all know that freedom isn't free. It will take our unified efforts, once again, to enable a world order worthy of the sacrifice of our predecessors here 72 years ago. May we always remember their devotion to duty and may it inspire us to give way together towards similarly sacred goals. Rangers lead the way, thank you.